I gotta tell you, I gotta t- tell you, Deb, I've been, um, I've been bragging about you for the last year. I've been telling people you are one of the most amazing people I've ever met. Thank you. I think when you when you were here last year and you talked about, you know, how you talk with your family and how you prepared them for things and gave your husband uh, permission to think, you know, beyond, uh, you know, next year or five years from now, ten years from now. I was just blown away by your perspective and just by uh, your your entire demeanor. So thank you. I, I th- I'm glad to see you here this thank year. You. I was going to say, know. Uh, you know, last year it sounded like you were saying goodbye, and, uh, and I'm glad you're here. Can you can you speak to that a bit? Yes, I mean I've I've already outlived my prognosis because I have um well it's colon cancer that metastasized to my liver, and when I was just first diagnosed, I had over 20 liver tumors. So that's a huge amount and I'm a nurse my husband has a PhD in cancer research so we knew what we were battling I knew it was bad but I did so well the first uh, two years it'll be three years November uh, November 16th it will be three years since I was diagnosed but with I have a particular mutation that usually has a 10-month prognosis and then the average colon cancer patient you know, is about, they live about 23 to 24 months. So I've already outlived it. Thank you to Dana Farber. And I have had a couple, you know, rough three months. I have to say my last year, I said, I didn't even know if I'd live to see my son graduate from high school. And ironically, I got to go June 1st to see his high school graduation, which was great. He's not here today, he's working. But that same day after we left, I said to my husband, I think I need to go to the emergency room. And I had a complication, an ovary was twisting from, you know, metastasis in my ovaries. So I was in the hospital for almost all of June. So tough summer, lost weight, and um, the cancer has spread. So, you know, things like that are harder. And I, uh, you know, physically, like I'm short of breath. I have now some cancer in the pleural fluid between the lung and the the cavity. So sometimes, you know, I, I sat in a chair waiting. So things like that, you know, have are a little bit, you know, harder. But through Dana Farber, you know, I'm, I'm still living, which is amazing. And I even was able to do a clinical trial, which was wonderful. And um, now I'm back on regular chemotherapy that I hadn't tried yet. And now I've had three treatments with it. But, uh, you know, that I want to be honest, because, it, you know, it is it has been tough. I even have a little tissue. I thought, oh, gosh, mm-hmm. I don't want to cry. But, um, you know, some days you do want to give up. Some days it's really hard, and you think, you know, people say, hang on, you know, there might be a cure one day. And you know, Dana-Farber has so many researchers and money donated to Dana-Farber helps, you know, hire more researchers and like I said last year even get the equipment and, and to really work on finding a cure.